Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to the EKG case for the week of April 8th, 2013. This week's case is sent to us all the way from Saudi Arabia. This was sent by Dr. Hazdan Al-Matik, who was working and one day saw a 30-year-old man who presented to the emergency department complaining of chest pain. And I'll highlight the age first because that becomes a very important factor. Let's think about this for just a second. When was the last time any of you out there saw a 30-year-old man presenting to the emergency department with chest pain who ended up having something significant or serious? Well, it's not that common, but in emergency medicine, what have we all learned? Every time somebody comes to the emergency department, you need to think about the worst case scenario first and work backwards and try to rule that out based on your history, your physical, and so on. That causes problems sometimes, though, because when we get our consultants involved, they've been taught a different mindset. They think about the most common or the most benign conditions first in many cases. You know, many of you have probably heard the phrase, when you hear hoofbeats, you think of horses, not zebras. You think about the common things. That's oftentimes uh, branded, bantied about by the inpatient folks and recited by the inpatient folks. Well, I like to say that in the emergency department, when you hear hoofbeats, you think of lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. You think about the killer diseases first and work backwards. So anyway, keep that thought in mind as we progress through this case. So here's a 30-year-old guy coming in, and here's the 12-lead EKG that we obtained on, on this guy. Dr. Almatik looked at this particular case, and he was concerned about the inferior leads. There's ST segment elevation in 2, 3, AVF. Maybe out laterally, maybe not. He was also concerned a little bit about some ST segment downsloping or depression in AVL, which we've talked about before, can sometimes be, can oftentimes be, an early finding or a reciprocal finding in an acute inferior wall MI. Well, he was concerned, even despite this patient's age, he was concerned about an inferior wall STEMI. He got the consultants involved, and they, their first thought in a 30-year-old guy with chest pain was acute pericarditis. It's not an uncommon thought to think about the benign conditions first. They're thinking about the horses first, not the lions and tigers and bears. Now, once you start thinking of a benign condition, you start looking for, and maybe even looking for or imagining, some findings, some things that support your diagnosis. And that's why it's important to not be biased too early with the diagnosis. Anyway, so they're thinking pericarditis. And then, well, if you're really thinking pericarditis, maybe you can start imagining a little bit of PR depression or downsloping in some of these leads. And I think that's one of the things that they were hinging their diagnosis on. There's just a tad bit of downsloping, and perhaps they were just a little bit fixed on the benign condition first, right? Do you hear the horses? They're thinking about the horses first. Dr. Almatik was not going to let go of this, and he kept pushing and pushing until the final diagnosis was made. So here we are dealing with a STEMI versus pericarditis case, and I think it's a nice time to review some of the things that we've talked about before. When you're debating is this a STEMI or is this a pericarditis? Now, if you want a full treatise on STEMI versus pericarditis, we went through that September 3rd, 2012. So just go to the website www.ekg.umem, it's awful handwriting here, uh, .org, and scroll back to September 3rd, 2012, and you'll get a full video that talks all about STEMI versus pericarditis with some nice pearls. In this particular case, I'm just going to quickly recap what you're supposed to do, what I've talked about before. There's just a four-step process when you're debating STEMI versus pericarditis. The first thing you do is to think about the deadly condition first. You've got to think about STEMI and work backwards. Look for the things that would rule in STEMI. So, first thing. What you do, when you look at that 12 lead and you're debating STEMI versus pericarditis, look for any ST segment depression. If you see ST segment depression in any lead except V1 or AVR, but in any of the other 10 leads, you're done. You've got a STEMI on your hands. Don't look any further. If that doesn't help you, then look at the ST elevation in leads 2 and 3 and compare them. If the ST elevation in 3 is greater than in 2, you're done. Don't look any further. That is a STEMI. If that doesn't help, then you look at the morphology of the ST segment elevation. Now, pericarditis or STEMI 
can produce concave upwards ST segment elevation. So you get an ST elevation, well, that's a little exaggerated, but you'll get ST elevation, which is like that, with STEMI or pericarditis. But if you ever get ST segment elevation that's horizontal, or if you get ST segment elevation that's that's tombstone, well, you'll see it in just a second. Well, you get tombstone ST segment elevation, then that's got to be a STEMI also, because pericarditis is only allowed to give you concave upwards ST segment elevation. So if you see any of these, it's got to be an MI, and you're done. Don't look any further. And finally, if you see Q waves that are evolving before your eyes, or you see Q waves that you know for sure definitely are new, then you can probably call that a STEMI also. Now, if you go through these four steps and you come up empty, the patient has none of those four, then and only then are you then allowed to look for the PR segment depression, which we always look for and think rules in pericarditis. The reason that we put PR depression down here is because, as, you talk, as we talked about on the September 3rd video, PR depression can be seen in STEMI. And that's why you've got to look at these things first. And then if that's negative, then you look at PR segment depression. But you never look at PR depression first. Otherwise, you're going to end up imagining PR depression and calling things pericarditis. So let's go back to the 12 lead EKG. And we'll go through that stepwise process. First question, is there any ST segment depression? Ignoring AVR and V1, is there any ST segment depression in any of the 12 leads? The answer is yes. Dr. Almatik already noticed, when we talked about, there's a little bit of ST segment depression in AVL and just a tad bit in lead V2. We're done. This has to be a STEMI. You don't need to look any further. If you did, however, uh, next question, you compare the ST elevation in leads two and three, and if lead three is greater than in lead two, then that's got to be a STEMI. In this particular case, honestly, I'd say it's too close to call, so we'll skip that step. The next question you look for is, is there any ST segment, whoop, is there any ST segment elevation which is horizontal in morphology or tombstone? So if you see ST elevation which is horizontal or tombstone, that's got to be a STEMI because pericarditis is only allowed to give you concave upwards elevation. Well, there's no tombstone looking elevation, but there is horizontal ST elevation. You'll notice that the ST segments are very horizontal in morphology. You're done. This has to be a STEMI. This cannot be pericarditis with ST elevation that's horizontal like that. And then the fourth question is to look for Q waves, which we're not going to bother to do because I don't have any old EKGs for comparison and we're not getting serial EKGs uh, on this video. So for two major reasons, the ST depression and also the horizontal elevation in lead three, this has to be a STEMI. You shouldn't even be at the point of looking for PR segment depression because you've already ruled in a STEMI. Well, Dr. Almatik pushed and pushed and pushed, they ended up getting in a stat echo, which confirmed the diagnosis of a STEMI. Thrombolytics were administered, and the patient ended up doing okay with only a slight delay in good patient care. But thanks to Dr. Almatik, because if it had been left to the consultants, it could very well have been a much longer delay. Uh, because, again, remember those people upstairs oftentimes think about the benign conditions first, and that's not what we do in the emergency department. We think about the dangerous conditions first and then work backwards. Now, just for comparison, let me show you a true acute pericarditis. This is real pericarditis. And we'll go through our stepwise approach. Again, first question, ignoring leads AVR and ignoring leads V1. Is there any ST depression anywhere on this 12-lead ECG? And the answer is no. So move on to the next step. Next step is compare the ST elevation in two and three. If the elevation in three is greater than in two, that's gotta be a STEMI. In this case, there's no elevation in three, so we can skip that step. Next question, does the patient have any horizontal or tombstone type of elevation in the leads? If it does, then that's gotta be a STEMI. And what you'll notice in this particular case is everywhere it's concave upwards, concave upwards. You know, we'll ignore these because they don't have any ST elevation to talk about, but concave upwards. Everywhere you look, it's concave upwards. So 
that does not rule in STEMI. It can be either STEMI or pericarditis. So that step didn't help. And then the fourth step, recall, is when you look for Q waves developing before your eyes. And that's not relevant here because I'm not showing you any serial EKGs. So you've gone through your first four steps. You've come up empty. So now you're allowed to look for PR depression, PR downsloping. And now that you're allowed to look for PR downsloping, you see beautiful PR downsloping in the anterior leads and also in some of the limb leads. There's a very nice PR segment downsloping. So in this case, you can diagnose pericarditis, but notice again, we did not diagnose pericarditis until after we went through those first four steps first. Was there ST depression anywhere except V1 or AVR? No. Was the ST elevation three greater than two? No. Was there horizontal or convex upwards ST elevation? No. Q waves developing with serial EKGs? No. And so then we're allowed to look for PR depression and we make the diagnosis of pericarditis. Don't jump straight to looking for PR depression. Don't assume the benign diagnosis also first because when you first assume the benign diagnosis, you're going to start imagining findings that support your benign diagnosis. You've got to think about the killer first. So that's the take-home point. And the last take-home point I'll leave you with also is something that we've gone through on multiple cases of the week, and that is this concept that young patients do have acute MIs. There is no lower age limit for diagnosing acute MI. We've talked about 20, 25, and now 30-year-olds that are having acute MIs. Please don't ever assume that somebody is too young to have an acute MI. Look at the 12 lead EKG. It doesn't lie. My thanks to Dr. Al Matik for sending a great case. He saved another life. And why did he do that? He knew EKGs. Please learn and master electrocardiography. If you do that, you are going to save lives. I hope this case was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you all next week. Bye for now.